Barrel is just shy of a hurricane as it marches closer to a Texas landfall overnight. Good evening, I'm Blake Hansen. Within the last hour, one of the stronger bands from Barrel came ashore, lashing the area with strong winds and rain. This is video from our Fox 4 storm chaser Michael Beard in Matagorda between Houston and Corpus Christi. Wind has begun to pick up as well throughout southeast Texas. Meanwhile, this was the scene earlier today on Galveston. On the left side, you see heavy traffic as residents and visitors made their way off the island. But there are also people from North Texas headed into Barrel's path. Fox First Amelia Jones spoke with local first responders chipping in and has more on the statewide response. Amelia. Blake, the Cedar Hill Fire Department got a call on Friday that their resources were needed down south. The crew is currently staged in San Antonio, and they could be there for as long as two weeks, depending on how hard the area is hit by the storm. Meanwhile, state officials are urging people in the storm's path to heed the warnings and take it seriously. Texans along the coast are bracing for the impact of barrel. The storm is expected to strengthen into a Category 1 hurricane when it makes landfall overnight. Once it moves through, first responders from North Texas will be there to help those in need. It's our duty. It's our responsibility to, to help one another. On Friday, the Cedar Hill Interim Fire Chief Rafael Reyes got the call from state officials that the department's AMBUS was needed. An AMBUS can transport up to 20 patients to and from hospitals. It can also transport people to a safer location if evacuations are needed from places like nursing homes. Definitely the, the, the more vulnerable populations uh, is, is who they're, we're there especially for. Um, but like I said, whatever the state uh, mission assignment leads us to, that's going to be our uh, our goal. A seven-man team consisting of four firefighters from Cedar Hill, two from Duncanville, and one from DeSoto are staged in San Antonio. They're waiting to see where they need to go next once the storm moves through. For our uh, fellow Texans down south, we're always going to be there uh, in, in times of assistance. Uh, there's other times when when they've come up north to us in, in our time of need. So as Texans, we're going to support Texans moving forward. And uh, like I said, this ain't the first and it won't be the last. On Sunday, okay. Lieutenant Governor and current acting Governor Dan Patrick, along with the state's emergency management director, urged Texans along the coast to get prepared for the storm's impact. Let's pray nothing happens where you live, but something is going to happen where some of you live. And that's something will be significant when significant rain and some flooding and again surge along the coast. The timing of the storm is a concern with many people still on vacation for the 4th of July holiday. You don't want to be on the road tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a bad day for weather. Uh, this storm is predicted right now by the National Hurricane Center uh, to land somewhere between Corpus uh, Christi and Galveston Island. State officials say the track of the storm is likely to change. Those farther inland and in the Houston area are urged to prepare for a major wind, rain, and flooding event. Dozens of crews from local, state, and federal agencies are prepared to immediately start response and recovery efforts after the storm moves through. But it's a serious storm, um, and you must take it seriously uh, and be prepared. And if you have family, friends, or loved ones who might be in the storm's path, you're asked to check on them. This storm has already left nine deaths in its path through the Caribbean. We don't want number 10 to be in Texas. Power outages are also likely to happen because of those powerful hurricane force winds. State officials are asking people to stock up on supplies that will last for at least a few days. Blake, back to you. All right, Amelia, thanks.